We've got 10 knives for emergency situations. I picked five and Theo picked five, and I'm pretty sure my five are superior. Oh, we'll see about that. Let's talk knives. Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. I'm George. And I'm Theo. We put out a short a little while ago called Five Knives for Emergency Situations. And it worked really well. We thought, you know, that could be a that that would be, serve well as a full length video. And so I invited Theo here to pick five knives of for his emergency situations. Mm -hmm. And I picked five. And this is pretty much the first time we're seeing them. Like we pulled them out, put them on the table, and we haven't even talked about them. Our uh, social media manager made sure that we like picked five of our own. He kind of sorted out when they got here and. Uh, we're just talking about them when you hadn't even looked at each other's stuff yet. So. so the rules were as follows. You had to pick one that was a folder, one that was an auto, one that was a fixed blade, one that was available for under $100, and then one of whatever you wanted. Theo, yeah, what's the first folder you got? So for my first folder, I've got the Spyderco Salt Assist. Uh, this piece is definitely strictly for like EMT and emergency services, but this one's more like water related. So you've got the H1 steel on it. It's gonna keep it protected from any sort of elements. Uh, but these are great. I have a dragonfly that I kept in my swim trunks by the ocean for years. This stuff never rusts. So I would definitely feel secure with this being in the same situation. Um, but for the reason I chose it, we've got like a, a rounded edge here. So if you're cutting someone's clothes off because they were just in an accident and you got to get their pants off for like to stop a bleed or whatever it may be, and you don't want to cut their skin, this rounded portion here protects that person being rescued. Um, along with that, we've got a very large ample grip so you don't lose track of this thing. But within the grip, you also have this section here, which is uh, a little whistle. It might be a little loud, but uh, it's got a whistle in it if you need it. And it's got these finger grooves along it. So when you squeeze the, the blade and the finger, uh, sorry, the, the blade and the handle together, you'll have a glass breaker pop out of the bottom there, uh, which I don't personally ever need a glass breaker, but if you need them, having it just hidden away, that's awesome. So. Yeah, we put out a poll a little while ago on YouTube, and I said, have you ever used a glass breaker? And the prevailing sentiment is, some people say, I would never need such a thing. But everybody else says, I very rarely need such a thing, but when I need it, my goodness, do I need it. Mm -hmm. And this way, I mean, it's kind of the best of both worlds. You know, I have nothing poking you in the hand, but when you need it, you just squeeze and... Yeah, I think it's excellent that you can just squeeze it and it pops right out, because I have another folder here that has the, the tip here. Uh, and if you're just like reaching into your pocket or something like that, it might poke you a little bit. It's not too sharp, but some find, people find that an irritation. So having it be hidden away like that, uh, that's a huge benefit. It's a solid opening, not gonna lie. Yeah, lock back, always strong. <laughs> you're not gonna have to worry about it closing on you or anything like that. Yeah. What'd you pick? Uh, I, I went a similar route with the lock back. I picked the Cold Steel 8010. This one's got the green G10 handle and the black blade. S35VN. Mm -hmm. And I picked this because in the hand, this thing feels like a survival knife to me. That's fair. It, it, it wants to go and just chop stuff. I actually have one of my very own. I sharpened the spine on it. And what I love about it is I can like make feather sticks when it comes to time to scrape a ferro rod. I can close the knife and then still have access to that. It makes a good draw knife too. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking like if I'm, if I'm riding the trains to get out of town after all the bad stuff goes down. <laughs> This is a great thing to just tuck in your pocket. Like you're not gonna look like GI Joseph. That's fair. You're just gonna be you're just gonna be nice and prepared for the emergency with a bomb-proof folder. I like that our idea of emergency was mine was like you're helping somebody else out. Yours is like I need to get out. I've been like out in the woods or something like that, and I've got to make myself some shelter or a fire or whatever it may be. This thing is definitely <laughs> more robust. Well, let us know who has the superior emergency folder. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of having like. Post. Second thoughts. Second thoughts. Because like, like this is a great all-around knife, but like when it comes to like seconds count, somebody's life is on the line. Sign me up for your knife right there. All right, let's talk autos. Alrighty, you can go first this time. Okay, so I chose the Microtech Ultratech. Microtech's actions are reputed for their reliability mm -hmm. and dependability. And even if you do get a misfire like that, you just oh look, it fixed. Great. Yeah. Like, just a great solid knife, got two edges of Magna Cut, so it's tough enough to take your beating, whatever. Oh, no, no, my edge is dull. No, it's not dull anymore. That's very true. <laughs> uh, having a double edge is definitely very useful, especially if you're like, what you were saying before about this one, seconds count, having multiple edges is quite nice. Yeah. And I have heard some people allege that the double action out the front has the same effect that they allege the, bolt, the pump action shotgun has, like, 
It's the sound. It's intimidating? The sound is intimidating. I really have no idea on either count. I've just heard the myths. Microtech Ultratech, specifically the Blade HQ exclusive with the Magna Cut. Mm. That is my choice. What you got? Uh, I chose the Benchmade Mediator. I uh, just told a, chose a side folding auto instead. Uh, I, I kind of went along the same idea of being more of a tactical sort of situation. So if you need something small to people poke with, uh, this seemed like a more reasonable option to go with than any other sort of folder. And I, I don't really necessarily know how many other like emergency services kind of autos there are other than more tactically oriented. And uh, something that we talked about in the past about different Benchmade autos is that they, they their action kind of varies depending on what the purpose is. So with this one, it's it's not slow, but it's very controllable. So these G10 handles, they're nice and they're robust and comfortable to hold, um, but the action is, is controllably smooth. So when you open it, you're not going to worry about it flying out of your hand. And if you need it for, for self-defense, you're not going to lose it. I like how you can, like, it definitely opens fast. It's nice and snappy. Mm -hmm. But like I can just pinch it with my two fingers, and that's plenty to hold on. To. Yeah, you're not you're not like oh my goodness, I just threw it because its action is too strong or the spring is too too robust. This thing is it's nice and small, so if you're just carrying it either on a pack or something like that, or just in your pocket, it's not going to be taking up too much space. But it's also enough of what you need that if you needed to use it against somebody else, you would be fine. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I like the mediator. I, I I still think I'm sold on my auto. Sorry. That's fair. That's fair. I mean. We're kind of partial to it. We it's in our exclusive. I mean, we don't have an exclusive mediator, but I do so like I the ultra tech. I like the ultra as well. Yeah, the mediator action is. <laughs> Again, it's up to the people. Which do you prefer, the mediator or the uh, ultra tech? So my my budget pick is the Gerber Strong Arm. It doesn't have very good edge tension. You know what? You are correct. 420HC is not renowned for its edge retention, but it is renowned for its corrosion resistance and its toughness. Mm -hmm. And. I would imagine in an emergency situation, the carbide content of your steel is not exactly on your mind. No, it's not about Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm eating my words here. I know I just asked about the S90V, but, but yeah, I think this is a great option. You kind of got this like rat tang, like it comes all the way through. It's not really exposed. Like as you can call it a full tang. Like, or a, a stick tang, is that pin, what they call it? I think it's pin and tang is what I've pin heard of tang. Us. Anyway, it's the full thickness of the blade, it's just not the full width of the handle. It gives you a nice strike pommel out here. This kind of diamond textured, rubberized grip. It's not super heavy and I love this sheath. Hmm. I mean, it works this way, it works this way. It, you can like make it horizontal on your belt. You can make it molly. You can do a million things with it. It's nice. It, it seems very well rounded for being the budget option that you chose. Because like mm -hmm. I know that people like it, they're like a good sheath. This one seems to be a pretty good one, especially with all the different mounting options that you have. Especially, I believe you can take this off too, correct? Mm -hmm. So you just take this. There's a snap here on the back. You can just remove that. This whole uh, woven portion you could remove if you don't want it or keep it on. There's like a bunch of different options for how you could carry this, and then it's also like robust enough that you could probably beat on this a little bit more than you do really need to in any sort of normal everyday thing, but if you're in the same kind of situation as the 8010 where you're trying to make a fire or something like that, this may be, really be a great way to go. Yeah, my buddy Aaron over at Gideon's Tactical ran a, like he called it the gauntlet, where he sent the same Gerber strong arm to like six different reviewers mm -hmm. and said, just beat the tar out of it. Mm -hmm. And they came back and it was very dull and it had basically no blade finish left, but it was still ticking and it still is now. In fact, that's a cool video series to go check out. Like, we're like cutting open steel drums with it and stuff. <laughs> Like it can take it seems an like absolute a cold steel test right there. I like that. Yeah, but the Gerber strong arm can just take it. Mm. I love it. And for the price, once again, an absolutely bomb-proof knife for the emergency situation that you encounter. I chose something very different. I, uh, I went with the Kershaw Dune, so this is more like a neck knife than uh, than any sort of full-size tactical or anything like that. This one is just like stuff it away uh, if you really needed to use it. This is again more like the Mediator, where it was like. People poking was my thought here. Uh, <laughs> so it's it's small, but it's really light. And I, I imagine if you needed it, this is gonna work for you. And then it's not very, uh, it's not a large piece, so you can hide it away or you can just tuck it away if you don't need it. And like, you don't have to worry about it until you need it. So this is a very stout knife. Like mm -hmm. the blade stock is quite a bit thicker than the handle scales. And I feel like it wants to be torqued on. It wants to be, it wants to be used hard. And I'll say how I would carry it. I'd probably immediately take these, this neck. Yeah, I would probably take this cord right here and I would run it through my belt and make this a static cord. 
keep it inside the waistband. And that way, like I said, you can just tuck it away, easy to carry. And it's right there when you need it in an mm -hmm. emergency. And it'll process your proteins in such a moment. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was my thought for this. It was like, it was fairly inexpensive and it was just, you need it for a very specific purpose and then it goes away. Yeah, I think that's one thing. Like in a lot of emergency situations, once the emergency is over, the law often has something to say about it. Yeah. Like, oftentimes you're gonna lose your knife. Yeah. So like if you got a $300 Microtech, it'll serve you great in that emergency, but you're gonna cry a little when they take it in for evidence. Yeah, This is my, my thought for this was more of like, as a civilian walking around in, the, in like just your hometown or whatever, maybe and something happens, rather than, I would imagine if you're taking an Ultratech somewhere, it'd be like, well, this is gonna be used in a battlefield rather than, like it, it, for that purpose, I should say. I, who doesn't want to carry an Ultratech? They look sick. But I mean, if you're going to use it purposely for people poking, Battlefield makes more sense than carrying it around every day. All right, so next I want to do the dedicated fixed blade option. Okay. Let's do yours first. I've been curious at whatever the thing is. Okay, I got this thing called the uh, Tops Attacks. Um, honestly, it is one of the goofiest looking things I've seen in a minute. But apparently there's a, a video that comes with it that has all the like the different tools and uses of this piece. Like it just tells you how to use all of them. So it's basically like a hand axe, but there's a bunch of different tools. So there's like a, a section here for if you were like doing a bow drill to light a fire. There's, I believe a range finder is part of it. And then there's a few other different uh, mm -hmm. tools within it that you could use. Yeah, so I guess you could use it for range if you yeah. wanted to, I mean, I don't know. Isn't the 556 like pretty much point of aim at 200 yards? like? Eight inches of drop or something. I don't know ballistics either. So steel and ballistics, not my thing. Neither do I. I literally have shot a 556 once. So that doesn't matter, but it's got like a protractor or something. Yeah, there's like a bunch of just additional stuff to this that I, I won't claim to know how it works. Okay. But it seemed like if I were dropped in the middle of the woods and this is the only thing I had, I would you be fine be for worse. a while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm thinking this is almost like an Ulu. So like, you can skin right there, but the Ulu, the traditional knife of like native Alaska, mm -hmm. First Nations in Canada, you'll see a lot of them there where it's sort of in line and they'll cook like processing and process and stuff, like stuff yeah. with that. So that. I could cool. see the utility of this having, if you took the hand, because the handle scales, they're not put on the torques, they're put on with like a flathead. If you were able to remove the flathead and then just use this as like the head of an ax, if you got a large enough stick and like uh, fixed it to the handle or up in this area here, that seems like it'd be really useful for that kind of situation as well. So it's not just a, a fixed blade, it's also like you can convert it into an actual ax. I believe that was part of the, the allure of it. Mm -hmm. It's like a monolithic multi-tool. Yeah. Like there's, there's no moving parts to break. It's it a little do. silly. It's a little silly for sure, but it's got like a, a fairly nice sheath to it. It's got this whistle on it. Uh, so there's plenty that if you needed to attach it to yourself as you're running around the woods, you're not gonna lose it. And it's also, it's it seemed like it would be very useful. And I, I don't know. That is a very interesting knife. I kind of want to do a field test of it. I now. think it'd be really fun to see that go into action. Yeah. Let us know if you want to see that. I went with something a little more conventional. <laughs> conventional or mundane. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd call this mundane. This is the Hogue EXF01. It's an Alan Elishowitz, Elishowitz design. I believe that's right. Yeah, there it is. Elishowitz, or however you say that. Uh, it uses A2 steel, and what A2 is, you should know, is it's an air hardening steel. Blacksmiths like it because of that. And it's very, very tough. Hmm. So you can wallop on this thing all the live long day and it'll never break. Full exposed tang, these nice G10 handle scales, and this cool little Torx wrench that comes out of the handle if you wanna remove the scales for whatever reason. You always have the tool to maintain your tool in your tool. That's actually super useful. I imagine that, that I. Don't know how well it's retained in there because I mean I've never it, seen one. I've never even seen one of these models before, but you gotta dig for it. It's pretty well in that's there. That's good to know. That's awesome. Yeah. What do you think though? That seems pretty cool. I like uh Elijah, like Alan's uh, Alan Alan? Alan. Alan? Oh sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I like his designs. They're like always kind of aggressive, but they're also at the same time understated. So there's like if I remove this notch up at the top, it would be pretty like standard looking, but with the thumb ramp, it, it kinda has the same way that the uh, like a Les George rock wall, not rock, rock eye has. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like, you could use this for both if I was out in the woods or if I was using this in a, in a tactical scenario of some sort of, um, I dig this thing. It's also not very heavy. Yeah, I picked it up and I'm like, is that really all that thing weighs? 
Is it like skeleton? I mean, you would probably know better than I. Is yeah, I believe skeleton? it is skeletonized. So that's what these two holes here are for, is so you can make this a spear if you want to. That's useful. I know that a lot of people are like, never turn your survival knife into a spear. Well, those people have never tried to catch a fish with their hands. Just saying. Doesn't work. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is the end of the required section. And the last knife on the table was wild card, anything you want. And I want to see the orange thing you haven't shown me yet. This orange thing I haven't <laughs> shown him yet is the Benchmade Triage. And this goes along the same kind of vein as the assist here, where it was just very functional, uh, purpose built for uh, emergencies like uh, EMTs would face. So this one has got like a seatbelt cutter on the back here, just tucked away. It's a big seatbelt cutter. Yeah, it's a very large seatbelt cutter. And it's it's retained by detent, so if you need to like snap it out quickly, it'll snap out easily. Oh, I'm saying that, I can't do it. Uh, snap out easily, but also not have to worry about like uh, being able to put it back away, especially if you need to get the knife out, which is mainly the more important part. You got a combo edge, but also a flattened tip, so similar to the assist where the tip is made so you don't puncture somebody. It's also, you could use it as a slight flathead if you really needed to. Would not recommend. Yeah. You'll and probably the, break it <laughs> if you like really torque on something. The last little thing, yeah, I kind of hinted at this before, it's got a glass breaker there. Uh, it's extremely aggressive G10. If you've ever handled an Emerson, uh, it's more aggressive than that. So this stuff is, you're not gonna lose it in your hand if you're running Holy around. Holy day. Yeah, that's like is crazy. Like tape, like skateboard level. Yeah, so here's the thing I love about this knife. Mm -hmm. I have always been intrigued by the idea of a knife that has a bunch of stuff for rescue on it. Mm -hmm. And you can find a great knife like that in the gas station, right? Yeah. It's just absolutely wonderful. It's got an aluminum glass breaker and something they call a seatbelt cutter and a hook to make it look all tactical. Yeah, like cut tactical. it out of the frame. Yeah, but this, no, you get a, a true carbide glass breaker and you get this absolutely massive seatbelt cutter that is very sharp. Like it just chews your th thumbnail off if you need it to. I don't think you'd need it to. But I, I didn't think you were gonna do that, so that was terrifying. I apologize. <laughs> uh, but it, it's great for cutting seat belts, and it's gonna be easy. It puts it forward. It's not a weird grip at all to mm -hmm. do the seat belt cuts. The like chamfer, not the chamfering, but the scalloping like in the handle here, so the mm -hmm. way you were just holding it is a comfortable rest for the hand. Yep, and then launch it open, and it is just absolutely ready to go to work. I'm I'm gonna be completely honest. There's a strange grind on like on this side here. It's pretty much just like your standard, uh, how, like a kind of half flat grind. Mm -hmm. And then on this side, it's flat here, and then it's grind up at the top here. So it's almost like the reverse for some reason. And I imagine that there's some utility to that. And I apologize, I didn't look into it, so I'm not sure. But it does have an interesting looking grind to it, especially if you look from the top, you can tell. All right, I like it, but I like my knife more. <laughs> All right. I went with the, I want Benchmade. We both went Benchmade, apparently. I went with the Benchmade Adamus Fixed Blade. And this is why. But like, have you ever had an emergency where you could plan for it? Like, I don't okay, think one week from today, we have an emergency, we gotta get our knife ready. So that's where I think this guy comes in because it's very slim. You can do a paracord wrap or you can find some aftermarket handle scales even, but just slides right into this sheath and it is super thin and super light. So you can just throw this in your backpack or in your fanny pack or whatever, and you're gonna forget it's there. Mm -hmm. But then one day when that emergency comes, hey, I need my knife. And my knife is very close to me and it is absolutely ready to go with this CPM crew wear blade. So it's gonna be tough, it's gonna hold its edge and it's just gonna wallop through any problems you have. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great, like a, I mean, we're, just, we're talking about bench made, I'm gonna say the bug out, but I think it's a great like literal bug out bag kind of situation if you're like, this is the bag I keep by my door if I ever need to run out and do some sort of, like have some emergency happen. That seems like a great one to just keep in there. Or like mm -hmm. you were saying, like in, in your regular backpack or in, a, in your car or something like that. Yep. I mean, the I would say the only emergency I've been a part of in which I was close enough to it and arrived at the right time for a knife to be useful, the knife I had on me was an SE Zancudo. And I didn't put that on the list because, I mean, it's a little smaller. It's maybe not the perfect deal for that. Maybe it's not the perfect everything. But the knife I had on me was good enough. What you have on you is always going to be better than the what you have at home, so yeah. Yeah. So I guess if there's one takeaway from this video is looking at this pile and that pile, all these are great knives for emergency situations, but you do not know when your emergency is going to come and you should have at least a knife on you. Yeah, pre prepare yourself with something. Yeah. 
So I don't have any of these knives in my pocket right now. I have a Benchmade Freak in my pocket. Yeah, I've got a, <laughs> I've got a S, not S, that would drop down. So. Yeah, I, I would take both of these knives over nothing any day. Of likewise. Week. <laughs> I invite you, as a citizen who likes prepared citizens, please carry a knife every day. And if you don't have one, bladehq.com is the place to get it. I agree. Hey, nice plug. <laughs> we love you all. Subscribe for more knife content. We'll see you next time. <laughs>